there is a question to be had that I've had when it comes to allegations of foreign influence for a very, very, very long time. Why do we consider some foreign influence acceptable and other forms not? If you've been under a rock and haven't heard the story today, uh, it started off with the DOJ saying they were going to make an announcement, news reporting the DOJ was going to make an announcement on Russian interference. Then they released the indictment. I've thumbed through the indictment. I have the gist of it. Tenant Media, which I've actually done a show on Tenant Media. Uh, Tenant Media included Lauren Southern, I believe Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, and Tim Pool. Uh, so just to talk a little about my interactions with Tenant Media, um, when I did Tim Pool's show, he has two shows. He has the main Tim Cast IRL show, which is his big show that's in the evening. The show I was booked to do was the Culture War podcast, and that is a show that's put on the YouTube channel of Tenant Media, not Tim Pool's main channel. Uh, that was the show I was booked for. So presumably the people that were booking me are presumably that organization, you know, somehow paid through tenant media, which the allegation in the DOJ's indictment is that Lauren Chen, who is one of these people, who is the person that's primarily responsible for getting funding for tenant media, uh, knowingly was getting funded from Russian agents. I believe specifically from people working through RT. RT is Russia Today which was a media channel that was deemed foreign propaganda or whatever the specific term that they used to deem it. And so they have to register as foreign lobbyist. Um, so we'll talk about the specifics of this, uh, but I did have some limited interaction with tenant media. Totally true. Now I stuck around and did Tim Pol Tim Pool's Tim cast IRL um, show in the evening as well. So we'll talk about all things Russia. Yes, we will talk about what I'm alluding to here as to how this is being blown out of proportion to make it sound like anyone who's criticizing establishment policies of the Harris-Biden administration or any of these sort of establishment institutions or giving money to Ukraine, etc., are Russian bots or repeating Russian talking points or that this is somehow significant interference in our election. We will talk about that, how it's being done once more in an effort to bring in censorship and delegitimize people that are criticizing establishment narratives. But I don't mind talking about the story specifically because unlike the shills on the left that will just be promoting this for political reasons, I will look at stories that seem to impugn even people on my side. So as I alluded to earlier, the allegation goes something like this, that Lauren Chen, well, first let me say everything that I'm going to say None of it's been proven. This is all from an indictment. And I'm also, even though I read through reasonable portions of the indictment, a lot of the names are sort of censored out. It'll say like U.S. Person 1 or U.S. Organization 1. And so a lot of people are filling in those blanks and perhaps their filling in of those blanks aren't accurate. So I just want to be clear. Everything that I'm saying here is alleged. I'm not trying to impugn someone by inserting their name into this story, even if I'm not saying they're guilty of anything, I'm just saying they're named as a person that was named here. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Um, I think though, it's easy to see that this is probably referring to tenant media. Uh, tenant media, in my understanding, and I will be open to be proven wrong, uh, is responsible through a collaboration of sort of paying and setting up almost a network of, for lack of a better word, personalities, influencers, streamers, that you would see people like Benny Johnson, Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, Lauren Southern. Now, full disclosure here, I don't think that what's being suggested is that Tenet is responsible or ev for all of these creators' work, or that everything those creators do is under the umbrella of Tenet. I particularly suspect that's not the case with Tim Pool. Because I know Tim Pool does stream to Tenet Media, and when he booked me for the Culture War podcast, the Culture War podcast is a show that is broadcast on Tenet Media. Um, so I think that Timcast IRL is outside the scope of Tenet Media. So why does this matter? Let's say, for sake of argument, that Tenet Media says, you are part of our network, Tim, for your show Culture War. Uh, but here are our terms. 
we will agree to pay you $100,000 a month. This is what we expect from you. You have to create X minutes of content. Uh, here are things that you can't say. We don't want you saying racial slurs. We don't want you breaking the law. Who knows? Maybe it goes further than that. Maybe it says you're not allowed to disparage Russia. I don't know. I, but let's say it says those things. I'm, unless it specifically would state in that contract, I think outside the scope of that. And so on any appearance that Tim Pool's doing that is not being put on the tenant broadcast network, I don't know that it would fall under that contract. Now, maybe the contract says you also can't say these certain things outside of um, your appearances on tenant or your production on tenant. Now, how much does that matter in the grand scheme? Maybe not much, but I just want to be clear that because I think that there will be a rush to be like, oh, so if it's true that Russians paid for tenant media and Tim pulls on tenant media, well, then we could, in, you know, we could intuit that the only reason that Tim pulls got a lot of viewers is because Russians and my understanding is Tim Pool had a very large audience outside of Tenet, before Tenet existed, before he had a relationship with Tenet, and he continues to have a much larger presence on his media that is outside of Tenet. It seems that Tim Pool is probably someone who's caught up in this because he's put out a response. I believe Benny Johnson has put out a response as well. So it, it seems that either they've been specifically contacted by the DOJ or that they have read the indictment and are understanding that it's heavily implying, although their names aren't specifically mentioned, that this is tenant media and it's referencing them. So just to be clear there, Tim's argument, and it does seem to be backed up by this indictment is that many of the names I just mentioned to you, uh, Lauren Southern, Dave Rubin, Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, that they were, basically duped they didn't know that the funding was coming from russians they they just didn't know so they're approached and, and this is where it gets sketchy for me because i didn't take the time to read through the indictment with a fine tooth comb and i'm also i have to claim sort of ignorance on exactly what tenant media is as far as who are the primary owners of tenant are there multiple owners? Who are all of the donors to Tenet, et cetera? Uh, but it appears that what's being suggested, and again, I'm not definitively saying this, but what's being suggested is it was spearheaded by this person, Lauren Chin. And it seems that what is being alleged, according to people that are inserting names, is that Lauren Chen knew about this. That basically Lauren Chen knew the funding was coming from Russia. In particular, I believe people associated with the network Russia Today, which was deemed a few years ago to be Russian propaganda and therefore has to register as a foreign lobbyist. So it basically becomes a FARA violation. People that are receiving money from foreign entities that you have to lobby, if you accept their money, you have to file paperwork that you're operating as a foreign lobbyist. And Lauren Chen didn't do that. She hid where the money was coming from. Dave Timmerman says, they got fed news and regurgitated it. They received money for this. The whole concept is fraught. They got money and news. Did they? Is that what happened? Did Lauren Chen contact them and say, okay, Tim, today you have to say this. Did Lauren Chen ever contact Tim Pool or Lauren Southern or Dave Rubin and say, hey, Last night on your show, you said X. You can't say that. Maybe. I don't know. They did. Can you show me where in the indictment it says it? I'm not saying it doesn't. I just, I skimmed it. I didn't see that part. First, before I talk about what I would say is why this is an overblown story and it's clearly selective in the outrage of it. It suggests it, right. That's what I'm saying. The indictment could suggest something. If they have receipts that like, look, Russia Today people told Lauren Chen, you will have your people say X. And then Lauren Chen goes to Lauren Southern and Tim Pool and says, you must say X. That's clearly more nefarious. I don't know if that makes it illegal, but it's clearly more unethical. So there's a lot to talk about here. 
So before I get to what people like me want to hear, which is like how this is clearly bullshit in the grand scheme of Russian interference and how the people that are claiming Russian interference are full of shit. They don't care about actual Russian interference. They only care about impugning and censoring people that go against the narrative that they impart. Let's talk about the other side of the coin. First question to ask is, did, what is your responsibility if you're being paid by some sort of network to look into where the money comes from? I always try to evaluate these through the lens of like, well, what would I do in any given situation? I happen to be what I think is an average or reasonably intelligent person, but I also lack a lot of weird social skills that maybe other people have because I'm kind of a weird fucking country bumpkin redneck. So like, for example, before I ran for Congress in 2019, like I never went to like political rallies. I never sat down and talked to a governor or, a, you know, I didn't even go to like fancy dinners very rarely in my life. Like I don't know shit about what fork to use and things like that. I just, I don't know. And oftentimes I would find myself, you know, in socially awkward situations. Now I'm pretty affable and easygoing, so I could usually get my way through it just by being myself. But that sort of comes in other ethical dilemmas that might be worth talking about. For example, there was a period of time when I was fledgling in my channel where I took a few sponsorships, uh, a CBD sponsorship I took at one point. Nice ladies contacted me. Would you be interested? They set me up with my own sort of um, website that was basically just like their website, but with my name attached to it, where you could buy CBD products. I did a couple like two minute ads. They sent me CBD products. I said, I'll try them if I like them. I liked them. I didn't think it was any miracle cure or anything, but I, maybe it was placebo effect. I don't know. Felt a little good after taking it. Did a couple shows where I was like, Hey, you should try this out. Here's my link. Go to it. If you buy something, I get like 10%. I couldn't tell you much about where that company was coming from. I had an hour meeting with those ladies. But is it possible that they were doing something fraudulent? Yeah. And I certainly didn't do what you would consider a due diligence. Now, I made a grand total of zero dollars off of that. Never made a dime to my knowledge. Uh, didn't sell anything. Got a couple free samples. That was about it. Um, but if I'm being quite honest... Should I have done more? Probably. So let's say I'm approached. I do Tim Pool show, right? And let's say afterwards Tim says, Rob, great show. Let me introduce you to Lauren Chen and her husband. They own Tenant Media. They'd like to offer you a contract. They'll pay you $5,000 a month if you keep putting content out and put like, you know, one show a week on their channel. Right? Let's say they said that. And I was like, oh, well, like, what are the terms? Just be yourself. Just do what you want. You know, obviously, you know, we're going to have you sign a contract that says don't break the law. Don't use racial slurs. But other than that, have at her, man. As long as you put it on our channel, good enough for us. One show a week. 5000 bucks a month. Let's say I would have said, sure, sounds great. I probably wouldn't have been like, well, where exactly is this money coming from? I want to know who the donors are to Tenant Media. I'll be honest with you. I probably wouldn't have done that. Now maybe I would after this story. But I would have probably just been like, oh, cool. Some business people that have this media network are offering to pay me money. You know, they're sending me a check. It's being taxed. I'm paying taxes on it. No harm, no foul. I'm not doing anything unethical on my end in that I'm not changing my message because they're paying me. The only thing I'm obligated to do is put one show a week out. No problem. Would people have done differently? Is that make me, is that really bad? I have no clue. Is that too naive on my part? Have I not ethically done what I'm supposed to by saying, I want to see more of the books. I want to see more of who exactly is donated to tenant media. Where exactly is this money coming from? I, I don't know. I'm just telling you as a fledgling person that lit like, fledgling in the idea that I, I basically have zero connections in the world of media and I'm fucking some dude who's living paycheck to paycheck. If someone offers me $5,000 and it's not like shady under the table money, but it's literally like, yeah, fuck, we'll, you know, we'll send you the appropriate tax forms and whatever. Everything's on the up and up. And it looked legitimate to me and they weren't trying to control my message. I don't know. I'm interested to see what people think. For me, given that I 
probably acknowledge I wouldn't. I understand that there's a little difference, particularly with someone like, I guess, Tim Pool, Dave Rubin. I don't know much about Benny Johnson. But Tim Pool, presumably, big sort of uh, business himself. He's, he's making a lot of money. He has a lot of employees. Um, maybe you expect someone like that that's more involved to be a little more diligent, like, wait a minute, where's this money coming from? Because he's in the business. Uh, so maybe you'd say, Rob, it's not an apples to apples comparison. I personally tend to say I'm not judging them that much if, well, as far as they should have done their due diligence to make sure this wasn't money coming from a foreign actor. That's what I'm saying here. Two other things that maybe are interesting to talk about other situations along this line that, you know, that I thought about is, one, the actual real situation that I could say, I can't tell you that I've never taken money from a Russian state organization. I can't tell you that. Why? Because I get super chats and I get Twitch subscribers and I've had people send me money on PayPal. Now let's get broader. Let's look at this broader, okay? First, before we get into sort of the more offensive stuff on this, there is a question to be had that I've had when it comes to allegations of foreign influence for a very, very, very long time. Why do we consider some foreign influence acceptable and other forms not? For example, if a state organization funds media in Russia like Russia today, we'll say that is foreign propaganda and we'll say then that that's, you know, under certain specific laws that they're foreign propagandists and that they could be trying to influence our country so certain laws apply to them. But not the BBC? Why? Now, more importantly, why is this story breaking? Do you think that it's possible that foreign entities have paid other media people a few million dollars and it hasn't been properly disclosed as foreign lobbying? What's your gut feeling? Do you think that Russians or Chinese institutions or Ukrainian or French or Korean or Australian, do you think that's occurred? Do you think? Yeah, I'd say it's about 100% chance. Of course, I can give you some specific evidence to show that. Why do you think that that's not a big deal? Why do you think that the DOJ is announcing two months before the election? Oh, man, Russia's interfering again. Tenant media. Well, let's see how the narrative is being spun by the people on the left. Once more, they're saying that Trump is the candidate of Russia. Once more, they'll be calling into investigations, whether it be actual investigations from entities like the DOJ, or it just be people saying, we demand, if you want to prove that you're not a Russian asset, then release all of your bank disclosures, release all of your communications, right? And then they'll disparage as anyone who's critical of the establishment narratives, particularly when it comes to which candidate you want, if you want Donald Trump, or decisions on funding things like Ukraine, They'll say that those positions are pro-Russian positions. It's Russian propaganda. 